In this game right now, game number three, the map is Mongolia. As always, we have a French mirror here. Of course, Musket Jr., uh, just one with Germany, he's also one with the British, can no longer use those civilizations. Uh, he picked France for this game, he has to pick first since he won the previous game. And then Gaia gets to pick responsibly. Gaia has selected to play as France again, opting to play another mirror. I think this is down, as I mentioned, uh, and I think I got this point from you actually, I think you said this originally, that uh, players who are very good mechanically, such as Gaia, when it comes down you know, to his ability to macro, his ability to... Um, to, to micro, uh, he's very good at that side of the game, and, and mirrors, you, you, that's where you can excel. I mean, decision making is another skill entirely. Certainly, Guy are very good at that too, but I think uh, those points emphasized here. Any any comments, Zuta, before I green up and do the intro? Uh, no, I'm good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to Saturday Smackdown. This is game number three in the best of seven series played between Gaia and Musket Jr. Spawning in the west of the map. In the color red, we have indeed Gaia playing as the French this game. It is a French mirror spawning with one wood crate there. Of course, you do get an extra gold crate. This is Mongolia. You also get an extra scout, which uh, French doesn't really need. I don't think French benefits from that as much as other civilizations do, since they do have that native scout. But on the other side of the map, in the color blue, also playing as the French here, we have Musket Jr. Of course, going to start with the same crates there and get that extra explorer as well. Zuta, what do you think of a French mirror? Uh, I've seen so many French mirrors that... Uh... I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the matchup anymore. Just oh, you're not selling it. <laughs> I, I've this just the exact some... same thing Yumi you said to me when we play, he was coaching me in a video, yeah. and it was a French mirror, and I'm like, what do you think of the matchup? He's like, oh, it's kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it's both, it, especially on this map, it's going to be both yeah. sides are just going to probably just make must cause one guy's going <laughs> to win a fight, and then the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of how mirrors are, though, and I, I guess mm. I just don't really like We mirrors, did just but... see... A very, very interesting German mirror there. Yeah, and and it was, it was. A, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't like it, there was like a. It was interesting because there was like lots of units, right? Like the the units were just like the normal units you would expect to like kind of see an age two German player make. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting because it just the map kind of thrust them into that consequence. I don't think that there will be that same interest factor here just because the map is is a little less conducive to that uh, mm -hmm. the trading posts aren't going to be something that are going to be in immediate contestion uh, mm -hmm. i guess the hunts are going to be something that's are yeah. going to be fairly important and there we could see a situation where we see you know like cdbs fighting for their lives or something like that <laughs> maybe but um uh, at the end of good. the day I, I don't think it's I think it's just going to be another French mirror. I think we'll just see lots of muscles yeah. and house. Blue, up in the north here, going for that 90 wood treasure there. That's not too bad at all. But uh, uh, you were talking about Hunt Zoo. So have you seen Gaia's? It's it's not so good. He really is not looking good for Hunts. And French mirrors seem to pan out as, you know, standard musk huts. You start with a, a barracks and a stable, and uh, you play the game from there. Eventually you'll go up, but mostly you're playing Colonial Agenda you know, just trying to play the game out from there. But having said that, Gaia's hunts are very bad. And I think that actually in this uh, particular, and, and those berries on the front, as well as the coin mine, all of these factors kind of adding up together, it would yeah. actually mean a crossbow pike start from Musket Jr. would be viable here, I think. Uh, yes, you know, I mean, it, you do have to consider all of the yaks he's going to have as well, which are going to mm -hmm. amount to, you know, a certain amount of very safe, very, you know, quickly gathering food at some point. Um, you are right about his hunt, though. I would almost say it's bugged. Uh, he should have, like, a second hunt, like, right up here somewhere, and it's just, like, a barren wasteland. Of, like, it, it lives, I can almost there. fit nothing it, onto yeah, my screen. Like, there's a couple of trees. But, it's brutal, yeah. It's, and I've got uh, a 1080p resolution monitor here, so that's saying something. Yeah, it's... Uh, th there's nothing in that part of the map. Uh, usually, you'll have, like, a secondary hunt. I mean, it's not like this is a huge advantage for Musketeer. Well, it actually, no. in this particular game, it is a huge advantage <laughs> having, you know, those five extra musk deer. Um, but it is five five deer difference, I guess, uh, at the end of the day. It's probably not going to be, hopefully, that big of a deal, but yeah. um, we'll have to see. Fairly even amounts of yaks as well, which is... Uh... You know, I think Gaia here would really like a few more yaks considering his hunt, but, you know, they're definitely, as you say, they're going to be uh, useful for food when uh, there really isn't anything else to get. Of course, gnats. What is he talking about? 
And he's probably looked at Musket JR's deck, who, which probably has natives involved. Yeah, he does actually have team improved native warriors and <laughs> all of the native cards in oh, it. Oh, so. are we going to see native Zua? Uh, there are some. There's the the Sufi guys. There uh, are those the ones with the elephants. Or are those the ones with the chakrams? I Sufi. I I do not. I think they're elephants for the Sufi. I think the other one is the chakram. Um, no, the Shaolin. I I do not know. I think Shao, the Shaolin, Shaolin give you is, a, is ration a coyote style. Yeah, unit. there's a ration shields. Uh, yeah. Sufi mosque. I think that's the one that gives you the elephants. What do you think of Rat and Shield, though? I'd say that they are probably the strongest mercenaries in the game. Like, once you get that upgrade that increases their, I think it's their attack and hit points by 50%, they are outrageously strong. And here, actually, Musket yeah. Unit going straight for the Shaolin Temple yeah. does want the Rat and Shields. They are really good. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, he's going to, I think they're okay. Uh, the thing is, they, they do lack a couple things. One, no. he's he has to build them from like this super awkward place in the map. It gets actually scouted immediately by Garja as well. Yeah. Um, he has to it's build so them from like this from one action. point like in a really awkward place. And mm. that's going to be pretty awkward in itself. Um, yeah, I don't know. Garja spotted it immediately. He might just yeah. like might just go going. pure musket and might just like win the game almost immediately. Of course, because once. Coyote Coyote runners are essentially what he's going to be training from here. Rat and Shield are that kind of unit, and of course, musketeers for the benefit of the vanilla people here. Uh, you know, I counter them. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Garja's got enough resources to get out ten muskets like straight on right away, like right now, mm -hmm. and he's got two in queue, so. Uh, these three ration shields early in the game are going to be fairly ineffective. We'll have to see what he pairs them with. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be some crossbows. Um, not necessarily what he wants against ten muskets, though. Certainly three ration shields and a handful of uh, uh, handful of muskets. He is going to build the Sufi mosque though as well. So yeah. maybe we'll get some. I, I, I feel I can't remember. Maybe some. I don't know what it is. Up. I Jack think Rams are Rams. like grenadiers, right? Which are good against heavy infantry. Yeah, they're they're like kind of a an AOE range type unit. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to see what he does there. But okay, have you noticed well, those those uh, rat and shield almost taken out of CDB there? That's not not too bad. And, and I just like to point out these rat and shield stats will be uh, you know uh, kind of like the same. I was hyping them up a bit more than it there actually is, but that's because he hasn't got that crazy upgrade that's available of that trading post did. But have you seen that uh, that livestock pen that Musket's uh, added in here? Eight crossbow marauding as well. I don't mind the livestock pen really at all. On yeah, it's a lot of cows. Uh, Garge is going to basically be forced to start use, using his... Uh, his livestock here immediately, mm -hmm. and, and I think he's actually on a timer. I mean, is maybe like semi trolly of a build here is that Musket is doing. Uh, should he survive and like just kind of keep control of the map here for taking out CDB? Yeah, for the next uh, minute or two, and just wait for Garja to run out of food. He could. Yeah. Find himself in a bit of a I think though we're gonna see an engagement here. The rat and shield coming in, of course, quite fast moving, gonna slow down the musketeers so they can't get away there. They're not actually that good against them. Musketeers actually counter them, but slowing them down so the crossbowmen can get into range. But actually, crossbowmen only just firing some shots there. They are now there. I think the snaring effect definitely gonna be very useful. But ultimately, is this a good use of his rat and shield? Mm, no, especially when we see five husks are gonna pop here very soon, and yeah. there are there are zero. Uh, anti cab units here, and, and when these five hussar come out, if he can bait them into uh, enough of a forward position that he can just get his five hus wrapped around the side here, here they come. Yeah, there they are. And, uh, They're going to come in. There is literally zero anti cavalry, as Zutra is pointing out. They're going to get absolutely ripped apart. And now starting to retreat. Of course, that explorer did see them. Where are they going to go? What does he have to defend against this? Nothing. Other I think than they're just all dead. He, he's oh, probably just best to try and hit and run the best he can. And, yeah. But, uh, Not looking too good. Zach to sending. Ouch. Uh, what do you think of this na native build then? I mean, standard French is very strong, and the reason we see it so often is no. <laughs> well, <laughs> Look okay. at the two elephants. War elephants. This came from home as well, so he must. Uh... Wow, is he gonna? Maybe <laughs> be okay. I, I don't have... know. There's. They have a lot of hit points. Four hundred twenty-five hit points. Uh, like only twenty hand attacks. Yeah. Yeah, they are essentially cuirassiers in, in their terms of power level. Actually, more hit points than the cuirassier, I think. I just think the um, Sar are just going to be like infinitely better here. And the yeah. Sar are just like, going to kill everything. Uh, there's just not an answer to the Sar at this point. Yeah, as I was saying, standard France is is very strong. We see it quite a lot. And that is, you know, no, there's no... 
coincidence that you see standard front. I mean, that trading post, sorry, not trading post, the market, you get steel traps, hunting dogs very early on in the game. You've got three Carreras and four Carreras out pretty quickly. It's really good, and it's good for a reason. Not a lot of things in a French mirror, I suppose, can stand up to that. Uh, other than outside of the the crossbow pike that may come into play if your opponent is bad hunts, but what do you think of this native stuff? Is it how bad or good is it? It's really not that good. <laughs> I mean, we we saw Garja, who's you know had a, a really quite poor map. Uh, it is essentially just like completely, uh, completely killed the native part of it. Uh, he, the, the the sad thing is he's the outcome of this still... fight though is actually not too bad. Though we did have to get his villagers involved. Yeah. It, the sad, the the bit of the scary thing is like where Garja is hunting. I mean, it, he does have eight crossbowmen available to him now as well. But I guess maybe it's not even a bad thing to have a CDB up here. You can just use him to mm -hmm. fight at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, it's going to help you catch up a little bit. Of course, you do want them working, but CDB very strong. Um, when they're actually fighting. Uh, obviously, you, you wouldn't use them aggressively because you that's too much time walking them around. But if they're in the location where they actually need to fight and they don't have to walk anywhere, they, they can be pretty good. But, you know, we're kind of slandering this uh, native build. Uh, but we have, you know, one of the most interesting players of perhaps of all time. I'm, I'm going to call him out and say that. Azak, right? He has some very interesting builds that you perhaps don't like quite so much. And when they work, you're always surprised. And you're just like, why is this working? I don't understand. But, you know, if it catches the opponent off by surprise, I think this native stuff could be quite good. Uh, it's certainly something very different. You don't often start in a way that, that counters it very well. Uh, though, of course, Gaia did scout it the moment that uh, yeah. that training And not only out. is it, is it he, did he scout it early on, it's easy to scout, right? They, the game essentially puts like a huge button over your name that says, "By the way, <laughs> this guy is making natives," and it's like yeah. it's not hard to hard to scout. Yeah. Maybe if uh, trading post count didn't show right above your name in the score bar, it would mm -hmm. be slightly better. But uh, the game basically broadcasts for you on your behalf, whether you like it or not, that you're making natives, and, yeah. and I, I guess that's like kind of awkward. Uh, I did want to mention that he did send the native treaties card which uh, is how he got those two elephants and like the four ration shields like fairly yeah. clutchly. Um, actually does work out to be a, a somewhat decent value card. And it is a terms, good card. In terms of like actual units but it requires you to have like all of the different native yeah. types. Built Such a steep map. requirement. It's, yeah. eh. I believe on vanilla Age of Empires 3 it's even better. You actually get one extra native than you otherwise would on Tad. Mm. This engagement right here, though, you can see that it's uh, red has just got a lot of units. Yeah, there's Blue now so many muskets and... out here. It's just going to be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Like no real anti cav aside from a couple of pikemen and rat and shield are you know despite me saying they are quite good they do cost wood which is a really like all natives a really irritating resource to be spending really inefficient unless it's like out of the 700 or 600 wood shipment uh that is not what he did i believe but anyway the, the point is this fight has not gone very well for him rat and shield certainly not being that favorable or useful here and and now that the the minutemen have been exhausted uh, mm -hmm. the position is essentially breached he's forced to trickle in units from as we mentioned before, these super awkward places on the map. Uh, and even five more Hassar out here for Garch as well. That's just mm -hmm. going to seal the deal. There's no way he can really get any sort of unit out that can deal with these five Hassar that are on the map right now. I'm very happy to see this style out of Musket Jr., though, despite it perhaps not being as good as Standard France. I think if it does catch your opponent off surprise, by surprise, and, you know, it does. People do get caught out by that kind of thing. We see it happen all the time with Azan. You'd expect people to expect the unexpected when playing against Azan, but time and time again, he wins for, you know, with ridiculous builds. And I think here that, that Musket um, is also quite a creative player. I have seen him, seen him some, do some really interesting things on Vanilla, but ultimately here, uh, this has not worked out too yeah, far. Yeah, so. You have to, you have to, the element of surprise though only works if it's actually a surprise. And, mm. um, especially like the higher the level the player, the less and less of a surprise it actually is going to be. And mm. like we mentioned pr previously, natives just aren't that surprising because they're super easy to scout in multiple ways. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, plus, I mean, I mean, we saw Dar Garja look at his deck like thirty seconds into the game and immediately. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he was he was commenting in the chat. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of high level players, and I think if this were a tournament setting, he probably wouldn't have said that he was expecting it. But you know, <laughs> we saw him; he was just ready for it. But yes, that does 
ladies and gentlemen, conclude game at number three. Gaia picking up his first victory in this series. The score is currently one to the red flag. Gaia over here and two to Musket Jr. Pretty convincing win this game, but let's uh, head on out into the next one. I mean, convincing in, the fa conv convincing in the fashion that it was, you know, bad build versus good build, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I mean,